last session. So with myself, Phil Taggart, and we're joined with a music lawyer, um, Eilish McKenna. How are you doing? Hi, Phil. How are you? I'm going straight in. I'm fine, but I want to know exactly what a music lawyer is and what a music lawyer does. So your music lawyer, you know, day to day is there to provide the artist with advice, really protect the artist and protect their music. Uh, we will more often than not be in the middle of negotiating or marking up documents and contracts for artists. But at the end of the day, it's really about protecting that artist and their music by giving them advice and negotiating deals on their behalf. Is there a time that would be perfect for me as like, say, I'm starting out as an artist for me to go looking for representation um, or is it something that you go and look for for the artist? It, it can be a mixture. I would say to artists, the earlier you can get a lawyer on board uh, in your in your phone book, the better to get that advice as early on as possible. Uh, but at the same time, if you're in a gig playing, you know, you can often find yourself surrounded by a number of lawyers in the audience hoping to take you on as their next client. Uh, but I think always the earlier the possible you can get advice, the better. Is there a situation where maybe somebody contacts you and they, they don't really need a music lawyer just quite yet? I think so. Uh, I will often get phone calls and, and many lawyers will just with, you know, questions here and there. And sometimes it is legal advice that you need, but often it's it's not actually legal advice you need. It's just some general advice. Uh, and you can get that, you know, with managers, with with many other, with friends who are in the industry as well. And it's not necessarily legal advice, but I think most lawyers will still be happy to sort of take you through any process and help wherever they can. No, that's the big thing is like the, the connections are, are, are massive. Like I've seen so many artists get management off the back of signing up to a, a music lawyer that, that has found them um, at, at a very, very early stage and has been able to connect them because your networking really has to be on point when you're a music lawyer, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it, it is still quite a small industry in the business sense um, in, in this part of the world, particularly. So everybody knows everybody and those relationships can can be uh, really well lent on in the right situation. So if if an artist and a lawyer are forming a good working relationship, you know, there, there may be more people that the lawyer can introduce them to, maybe a label, a publisher, management agents, uh, because they know that those people work well for their artists, so it would be a good fit. Are there still dodgy deals out there? Are there still dodgy labels? Are there still people taking advantage of musicians and artists? I think there are still dodgy deals out there that need to be you need to be wary of, but thankfully, I don't think there's as many as there used to be, so things are improving. Is there one thing in particular that you just like look for in a contract and you're like going, <laughs> no. I think the word you always need to look for is exclusive. If it says exclusive in there, find out what that means. Yeah, because it is a very open-ended word, isn't it? It is thrown around a bit, but it, you know, if you think through the implications of that for your your tracks, your songs, your name, uh, that's one word that people sometimes miss. When I signed my record company um, as a joint venture to Sony, um, it said for everything in the world and beyond i think it was and space or something like that or, or the galaxy why did they put that in there well i guess there's going to be gigs on 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 the moon pretty soon you know so <laughs> things are opening up so they got to cover all bases the perfect time to to hire a lawyer for a, an emerging artist when, when is that i think speak to a lawyer get a lawyer on board as early as possible but but when you say hire, I suppose people think of that as having to pay for advice, you know, from the get go. And I think hopefully these things are a very long term relationship. And in the early stages, it really reflects the stage that the artist is at. So it can be a quick chat, a quick question on the phone. Uh, it's not a case of negotiating big deals or having to do work for an artist on a day to day basis. Uh, so I think it sort of reflects the stage of an artist's career in terms of what's involved. And, and finally, like what, what, what tips would you give to um, young artists who are, who are starting out and, and maybe just don't have that sort of uh, business acumen or legal acumen? Like what, what, what would be the, the one tidbit that you would share? I think if you're going to sign anything or if you're asked to sign a contract by anybody, you really need to understand what you're signing up to. It, you know, it may be the right time. It may not be the right time. It may be the right uh 
contract it may not fit but you just need to understand what you're signing up to so find somebody who's willing to give you a bit of advice and even if you can't afford to pay for you know the full bells and whistles service in terms of negotiating that contract to the way you would like it in an ideal world you should find somebody who will give you a quick chat a quick bit of advice on the phone so that you are reassured yes this is the right thing for me to do and i'm comfortable and i know what i'm signing perfect elise thank you so much i feel like i feel legally ready to take on the world (laughs) very good phil